Um, so Victor's going to bring the word this morning and let's just pray for him now. I want to pray uh, for Victor that as he speaks to us that we would uh, hear your word to us this morning. Thank you that we've already heard um, your word through Jackie and through Beth and through Naomi and uh, we just pray that um, what it is you're saying will be sort of, uh, concluded by Victor this morning. Amen. Can, can you hear me? Okay, that's good. I won't shout then. That's great. Uh, morning, everyone. Morning, church family. Um, um, and thanks, Giles, for, for that prayer. Um, the Bible says that uh, um, once I heard, once the Lord spoke, twice I heard, the power belongs to the Lord. God's spoken already. Um, you know, like Giles just prayed. We, I mean, thank you, Jackie, for that testimony. And that's just so amazing just to see um, God's goodness and also just to see. Um, the generosity as well, you know, of, of the, ch the church family, but also of friends and everyone else out, out there. And it sort of tied in very much with what we're looking at today. And uh, and also the, 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 the worship, thanks Beth for, for leading worship and those songs I thought were quite powerful. So thank you very much. And also the poem as well, I thought it was brilliant. So thank you. Um, thank you Naomi for reading um, the, the Bible verse for us this morning. Um, it's interesting when I was sort of preparing for, for this and I was reading the Bible verse, the more I read it, the more I thought actually is as though Paul was writing this, this letter to KC. That's what I thought as I read it, you know, but he started off talking about the generosity of this, of this, of this church in Corinth. And I, and I look to KC and I see the generosity, you know, which we all share. We know, you know, Paul was talking to these people and he was sort of, if you look at the way he verse that in, in verse one, actually, you can see how, um, He's talking to people more, they say, you know what, I really don't need to say these things to you, but you know what, I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, and it actually says that in verse one, it says, I don't need to write to you, but I, I'll just write anyway. It says the same thing with, my, with what I want to share this morning. I don't really need to say these things to you, but I'll say it because I've been asked to, number one, but also because um, I feel God God wants us to hear it. And and there's, there's something, there's something about hearing God's word and hearing it again and again and again and again. And um, I, I, that's something I learned um uh, towards the end of last year, which was repetition builds mastery. So to become a master at something, you've got to keep repeating it. You've got to keep doing it and then you become a master at it. So I think um, God wants us to become masters. What well, God wants us to become people who master his words, who actually understand his word and run with his word. Um, so we already know what the context is, but I'll go through it again. Uh, we see um, in Giles's letter to the church uh, last week, uh, he talked about chapter eight, of Second Corinthians, where he talked about um, um, Paul putting together um, the, or calling together for an offering for, for the church. And so that obviously the, the church in Corinth are busy, busy trying to put that together. And in chapter nine, you can see where Paul carries on with that whole same theme about giving, saying, you know, hurry up, get his money together, get this collection together. Um, and this collection obviously was for the church in um, in Macedonia, and he's boasted about the church as well. So he's told the, the people in Macedonia how amazing the people in Corinth are, and also he's told the people in Corinth how amazing the, the people in, in Macedonia are in terms of giving. You can see all of that there. I mean, when I read it, I could see a bit of sarcasm in a bit in the way Paul wrote the, the verses. I can see a bit of him just having, having a big laugh with, with the church in Corinth. But there's something interesting he does, and that's sort of where Naomi picked up from it in, in reading the verses there, which is where he actually um, sends an advanced team. So he sends a team to go before he arrives. And I don't forget this is the same Paul who just said, you know, I know you're good at giving, I know you've got the money together, but don't worry, I'm going to send the team before I arrive just to make sure that everything is collected, all totted up, you know, we've got the collection ready, all collated, and I don't need to basically repeat or, you know, encourage you to give again. I don't want to compel you, you know, just I'll send this team. And he sends Titus along um, with him, uh, with, with, with the team to go before he goes. And I think um, when we as so you can see a bit of that teasing going on there. And I think when we look um, at what Paul's doing here, um, and in particular in verse five, you can see where he's encouraging them to understand the process of giving, making them understand that this giving, he, he says it very clearly. He says, then it, the generosity will be ready. And also you are not giving out, of, you're not giving grudgingly or giving out of compulsion. You can see where he says that there. And in verse six, and it's the reason why I have this background behind me, um, and I thought it was very apt. Uh, it says, remember that whoever sows sparingly would also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously would also reap generously. 
see, Paul uses this whole analogy of a farmer who goes out to sow seeds freely all around everywhere and they fall on the ground. Uh, and, and there is, um, and, and the point Paul is making here is, well, if you sow seeds everywhere, as, as most of us who've got guardians, who've got pat allotments, or those of us who do a bit of farming work would know, that the more you put out there, the more you're going to get in return. If you want many seeds back in terms of an apple, you know, an, an apple tree with so many apples on it, you've got to sow the seed in the first place. Uh, but it's interesting as well where he goes on to say that those who sow bountifully will reap bountifully, and those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly. But then the interesting place I wanted to dwell upon is actually in verse um, number 10. And I'll just read that. I beg your pardon, in verse number, verse number six, I'll read that again. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. Verse seven, each man should give what he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly, not under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And really, that's, that's the, the theme of, of, of this, this message this morning. Now, the charge, Paul, Paul's charge that the people of Corinth is to give from their heart. Each man should give from their heart, not out of compulsion. And I sort of looked at, I thought, well, when Paul talks about compulsion, what does compulsion actually mean? And, and the dictionary definition says that compulsion, the word compulsion is a noun, and basically it means um, the action or state of, of, of being forced or being forced to do a thing. Okay, so it's basically the irresistible urge to be to behave in a certain way, or rather, um, be required by, um, or as if by law to actually do a thing. That's what compulsion is. And Paul's really saying here that giving and being generous shouldn't be done out of a place of compulsion or being compelled to the oh, I've, I've got to give because I've been asked to give. I've got to give because it's the right thing to do. But Paul's saying here, no, actually, you need to give from your heart, freely from your heart. And I want to thank you, church, for doing that already, for giving freely from your heart. And the encouragement, as Paul was talking to you, will be carry on, keep doing that, keep giving from your heart, not out of compulsion. Um, and is it, as I kept looking at these verses more and more, I, I, one of the things I, I noticed was that this whole idea of being generous in the biblical sense of the word is really not about um, the giving itself. Is more about the attitude behind the giving we actually do, the actual giving we give. And I think that's probably why um, when you look at um, the, 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 the story, Jesus in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a temple area where he saw the lady, the, the widow who came in with um, her two mites and actually put that in the offering bowl. And all the people coming around putting everything, you know, some of what they had in the wallets in the offering bowl. And Jesus made a point about that this woman has given more than all the other people combined together. I thought that was quite straight outrageous to say. I mean, Jesus, he, she only gave two coins. These people were giving so much and they had, you know, they're giving bitcoins in this case, you know, giving a lot of money. She's only just giving two, two pennies, you know. How can you say that? But Jesus was really looking at her heart. He wasn't looking at, the, looking at the amount, he was looking at her heart. And I think that the first thing, looking at this verse is the challenge or the question that I had to ask myself, and I think it's a question for the church, is how is your heart when it comes to giving? Do you give just because you've been asked to give? Do you give just because you think it's a good thing to do? Um, some of us do tithing, so we do the 10%. Do you do that because you think, well, I think church has always done 10%, so I, I just do that. Or do you give because you've actually had a discussion with God? You've actually, actually, you actually feel, you know what? I want to give because God, in my heart, I've, I've searched my heart, and this is why I feel I need to, I need to give. It's interesting when you look at these verses as well, that you see Paul talks very carefully he talks about each man, he says very carefully, each one should give according to the way he's decided. Each man, so giving is for each person. For, I mean, it's, it's a believer's duty to give. It's a believer's calling to give. And so we ought to give. But the point here is, is, is an individual task. You need to individually decide to give, is the point Paul's making here. But secondly, he says, it's what you've decided in your heart. And so that's the first question. How is your heart when it comes to giving? How do you give? I mean, I'm in that category where I, I give, but I don't really think about it sometimes when I give. I'm not necessarily intentional about my giving. You know, you set up the direct debit and you forget about it. You're not really intentional about it in some ways. But in some other ways, um, I catch myself and I say, actually, no, I need to be intentional. I should pray about it. I actually think carefully about this, my giving, and then give. And so really, I think it's something we, is worth thinking about and we're reflecting about, upon. 
I think the next thing we look at then is in um, it is in verse six and verse seven where we see um, sorry further down um, seven seven and eight where we see where Paul talks about giving in a, with the right attitude, but beyond that, he then talks about the blessings or and that comes with giving. Now it's interesting just listening to Jackie's testimony and listening to the response from 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 Giles. It's interesting to see there where even as Jackie spoke, she talked about she was thankful to God, she was grateful to God for her giving for the giving the gifts she's received. And, and sort of Giles mentioned that as well um, in the end as well. But that's part of the beauty about giving. It's the recipient being grateful, not just to you who's giving, but grateful to God who's made that possible. Could it be that for some of us, and I'm included in that, that um, we're probably holding back a praise that's due to God by not giving? So because when you look at the scripture carefully, <laughs> that's sort of what comes to my mind, that actually by me not doing what God has asked me to do, Perhaps I'm actually holding someone else back from actually praising God for receiving something because I just haven't done that. So the praise that's due to him, to God, hasn't gone to God because I haven't done what I need to do. I don't know. It's just something for us to think about as, as we look into, into giving some more. Um, and, and, and I think um, when we look at this, this verses a little further, it's Paul says it carefully. And I think maybe perhaps we just need to, to read it as we go through there again. He says, for God loves a cheerful giver. Okay, so he, you're giving, but it's about how you give. And I looked at the word cheerful giver, and I thought, well, that interesting, God, you know, you've got this interesting words. We don't use the word cheerful on, a, on, every, on an everyday basis. But I remembered Christmas, and I thought about, you know, my kids on Christmas Day, opening the presents and all that. I remember the reaction I had, or, or how excited I was for them as we opened the parcel, as we opened the presents. Obviously, they were very excited to open the present, but I also was excited to open the presents, so to see them open the presents. And the amount of joy I had in that you've just seen them all excited with the presents they've received. You know, things they wanted, they've got it there. You're all excited, but also I had so much pleasure in seeing that. And I think God gets a lot of pleasure. And we also get pleasure when we see that actually our gift has made a difference. Jack has just spoken and we can see how the gifts from our community group, the gifts from the church, we can see how that makes us as a church family feel. Thank you, Jesus, we're able to actually bless our sister. Thank you, Jesus, that we've got such a great church family that we can actually bless each other. He gives us joy as well, as much as it gives the Father joy. Now, so I think the, 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 the point I'm trying to make with all of this is um, not just about the heart of giving, but also what it does to God and what it does to us as a people. It gives, it makes the, the giver gives praise to God, but it makes us give praise to God. Further down in the verse, we'll see also what it does as well. It makes the, the, the receiver actually pray for you, the giver. I don't know if you've seen that there in, in the verses as well. Um, it makes the, 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 the receiver, I think it's verse 10. So it makes the receiver, the person actually who receives the, the, the gift to actually pray for you as well. So isn't that amazing as well? Actually, you get an extra prayer, the fact that you've actually given. But the point behind all of this, Paul's saying, and, and the four points which Paul makes um, quite clear with, with this form of, of giving, and is that when we give, we help meet the needs of God's people, which is what the people of Corinth were doing. And that because they gave, they're able to meet the needs of God's people, the immediate need, which is material, or financial in that case, but also beyond that, you're actually expanding God's kingdom. The other thing as well was that, uh, and I've mentioned that already, is that by giving actually, it made people have another reason to actually praise God. It also shows the evidence of God's work in our lives as well. Because effectively, all we're doing is we're responding to God's love in our lives. You know, Giles talked about this last week, freely we receive and freely we give. You give from that which you have. Um, and lastly, it, it prompts, like I said already, it prompts the person it prompts a sense to actually pray for the given. As I conclude, because I don't expect this to be a very long, um, the plan wasn't to make this a very long message, really. Because again, like I said at the beginning, this is something which we're familiar with. Um, but it, it, it's really to think about those, those, the points I've made. And I've summarized them in four questions uh, or, or for, to ponder over. But before I say that, I think that the one thing I want to make is, um, and this is something that's uh, true about my life, is that sometimes I, I don't give because I feel that I don't have enough. And I feel that, oh, um, maybe when I have, then I will give. And I think that's true of scripture, or that's true of Christian living. In this, and what I mean by that is, um, you give of that which you have. Obviously, God's not expecting you to go and borrow and give. No, give of that from that which you have. And I think that's what's called sacrificial giving. And that's what the the, 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 the the story I mentioned about the, the lady, the widow, the widow's might is all about. So it's sacrificially giving from that which you have. 
And as you give of that which you have, God increases and God multiplies back to you. Again, going back to looking at the um, the, um, the 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 this, the point Paul made about sowing and ripping. For us as Christians, and I appreciate some Christians are very shy to talk about sowing and ripping, but it's a universal law. It's something that's there. It's in agriculture, but it's true that when you sow, you rip. You know, you sow corn, you rip corn. You don't rip something else. You would rip back what you sow. It's, it's known, and Paul refers to that as well in scripture. And I think sometimes Christians shy away from that, but partly because of how sometimes verses like that get abused. Uh, it's been abused by some parts of the church, um, prosperity preaching and the rest of it. But actually, when you give from the heart, it's completely different. Um, so the four questions I want us to consider is, how is your heart when it comes to giving? What your attitude towards giving? So that's the first question. And the second question is, do you give cheerfully or out of compulsion? Do you give with excitement? I can't wait to bless this person. I can't wait to see God's kingdom expanded. I can't wait to see the work going out in X country being expanded, you know. Do you get out of excitement? Or you think about it with compulsion and grudgingly, like the way I pay my taxes, grudgingly I do that. Even <laughs> is completely different. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever opened their, their pay slip or their tax return and excited about what Her Majesty's government's taking. I'm never excited about it. But that's different. That's, you're allowed to be gr to be gr to, 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 to not be excited about that. But when it comes to giving, God expects us to be excited about it. And lastly, um, it's a question, but uh, but I think. In our groups, we could discuss it, but I think it's something you probably need to do personally. It's what's God asking you to give right now? In 2021, what's God asking you to give? You look at the question the other way around. Why not ask God, God, what give in this new year? Talking about new year, new year times when people look at setting new resolutions, you know, I want to get fitter, healthier, disorder. How about reviewing our finances and also reviewing our giving to the church? Uh, I, I wasn't have to mention this, but I thought I might as well, given that I've got a stage, you know, why not review our finances to the church? And then this again is something which I had to, I had to reflect on, upon as I was preparing this, thinking, actually, you know what? I actually really need to look at my finances to the church again and think, hold on, um, what's changed in my life and what do I need to do in terms of how I give to, to KC? And perhaps it's something we need to do. And I appreciate Charles hasn't talked about this. Uh, no one's talked about it, but <laughs> there are needs in the church and, and, and it has to be met by the church, by us, the saints. So these are the things I want us to consider, I want us to think about as we break into, into our groups. Um, if anyone's got a big theological question around giving, I'm happy to deal with that, but I thought this is not a context for that. But um, yeah, happy to have a one-on-one -on -one with you on that in terms of giving and receiving and all of that stuff. If you want to know stories about prosperity giving and rest, I can talk to you about that and why it's wrong. This is not a context for that, but I just want us to focus on these four questions um, and, um, and, and encourage you and say thank you for what you've already, what you're already doing. Paul says at the very end of that, of, that, of that chapter, he says, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift, this wonderful gift of his love, which connects us all together, this gift of salvation, which actually brings us all together as church family, you know, that we can actually give and be generous to each other. What amazing truth this is. So thank you, church family. And as we break into our, our, our little groups and have further discussions around this. Great. Thank you, Victor. You're such a good teacher. Very clear. Uh, continuation of what we said last week. Um, so um, we are going to go into those groups in a moment. Um, um, and you can discuss those questions that are in the chat. And... Um, I'm just going to share, I think we missed the, the notes earlier, so I'm just going to share those notices with you um, before going into the groups.